Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Jim Dre Westbrook, Worth the Way Guy here, and you're now tuning in to episode five of Expose Worth the Way Guy Chronicles. So on today, we're going to jump into chapter five, and that's the definition of a relationship whore. Yeah, uh, I know that sounds a bit crazy. I know that title probably jumps out at a few people, but uh, I'm going to break it down and tell you why uh, I theme this the definition of a relationship whore. Or ho, if y'all want to, uh, you know, keep it real, is that uh, I was a relationship ho. Uh, I know that again seems crazy. Wait a minute, you're worth the way, guy. You know, Dre, you're a nice guy. Yes, all of these things are true. Uh, but this is something that I was uh, deemed while I was in college, man. Uh, just me, just being myself. You guys have already heard some of my stories. Uh, if you've read Worth the Way Guy Chronicles on worththewayguy.com, you already know most of my story. But uh, even if you haven't read those, but you're now watching Exposed, uh, I told you on last week, I was addicted to infatuation. So I just loved being around beautiful women. Uh, I've also talked about I had a savage mentality, so my end result may have not been the same as most of the other guys that were out here, you know, smashing stuff. No, that wasn't me. It was just having a release to just be around some cute girls, you know, like I liked that. Like I didn't need to go any further because I was already kind of getting off and getting what I needed from that, you know what I mean? But I want to jump into a few stories that uh, kind of give you some background on why uh, I was called a relationship hoe around campus. So uh, for me, like I said, man, I was a real cool guy, real chill, very hospitable, nice, always smiling. And like I said, always around the women because me and my homeboys, that's just what it was. You're in college, you're young, you're finding yourself, and you hang out with the opposite sex. I mean, that's just what it was, man. But uh, for me, as I got to know certain women, like I said, maybe going to lunch, uh, going to, uh, you know, study groups, uh, you know, just actually like kicking it. I tended, uh, you know, I, I actually start liking them. You know, I mean, you hang around someone long enough, you're going to catch feelings, you know, we're human. So I would kind of like them and I wouldn't say we would be kicking it, but I'd have a thing for them. You know what I mean? I'd be soft on them. And before you know it, there'll be someone else and I'll have the same feelings. Again, this goes back to what we talked about on last week where, and being intentional. I was not intentional at this time in my life. I knew my end result, but how I was gonna get there and the things that I was doing, again, maybe not, um, they didn't help my walk. So before you knew it, man, like I was walking around campus and probably was interested uh, genuinely interested in two or three women at the same time. Uh, as I said, not doing anything with them um, like that, you know, but I had, a, I had a thing for them. So I met a young lady my sophomore year. Uh, her name is Tasha, and you guys will hear a lot about Tasha uh, moving forward. But I was uh, very, very soft on Tasha. Uh, she was from my area in Michigan, uh, beautiful, everything about her very nice young lady and I was and as I was pursuing Tasha it was funny because she broke it down to me uh, and actually her friend uh, Danielle at the time she's the one who called me a relationship hoe before even Tasha could get it out Tasha as I'm kicking it with her one time flat out told me uh, she was laughing before she could even get it out and was like yo you know Danielle thinks you're a relationship hoe and it took me by surprise because I've never, I've been called some things. Trust me. I think we've all have been called some things in life, but I ain't never had nobody call me a relationship hoe. Yeah, she called your boy a relationship hoe. And I didn't really know how to react to that. I kind of laughed and chuckled, but I felt you know, almost offended because it's like, wait a minute. Like, I know who I am. I know I'm a lot of things and I know I'm, you know, I'm not some other things, but like, a relationship hoe? Like, how can a how can a man be a relationship hoe? Like, what wh what does that even mean? And she broke it down because she was like, "Hey, man, like, I see you move. Like, I, I see you're nice to this girl and nice to that girl, and everybody thinks you're a great guy. You're cool, but like, you're not banging anybody. You're not sleeping in with anyone. So, you like them, and you catch feelings. They catch feelings, and you're kind of in these." 
relationships. Uh, so yeah, you're a relationship hoe. And I had to laugh and it made me like really like crack up because it was like, I can't even lie. Maybe I am. Maybe I am a relationship hoe. And I was in denial, but it was like, I don't know what else to call it. Maybe I could find a different name to call it, but if we want to just keep it real, keep it 100, I kind of was like a relationship hoe back in college. My first two years, I got better. So my takeaway for this whole entire video, man, is the streets is watching. Trust me, the streets is watching. And I know that's not proper grammar, but for those who know hip hop and know where I'm coming from, yeah, I'm talking about Jay-Z, I'm talking about Dame, I'm talking about Rockefeller. Yeah, they had a DVD, The Streets is Watching, and it is what it is. Don't go around moving in life like people aren't taking notice. People are watching you. They may not say anything right away, they may not ever say anything, but you better trust and believe the way that you move and shake around this earth. Someone's watching you. They may be close, up close and personal, or they may be watching you from afar. Maybe they've never met you and they follow you on social media. They're watching you. They're watching your every move. They're trying to see if you slip up. They're trying to see if you're going to get better and reach that potential. So no matter what you got going on in life, man, I want to make sure that you guys are doing it the right way. Now, when I say the right way, I don't mean perfect. We've already been through this. Nobody's perfect. It does not exist. But it's who you are inside. Who you actually want to be. Not necessarily what society tells you to be and all of that other stuff. No, who do you want to be? If you want to be great, be great. Don't half step this. So when you're moving and shaking, don't think you can just do something and get away with it and nobody's going to call you out on it. Because clearly, back in the day, I thought I could move and shake and be nice and, you know, do all of that stuff. And nobody would take notice. But Danielle took notice and Tasha definitely took notice. So I wanted to switch it up. I, 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 Since I was put on Front Street and I couldn't run that same, I didn't think it was game at the time, but I'll call it run that same game. I wanted to man up. I felt that in order for me to even get close to Tasha, I couldn't be a relationship hoe anymore. <laughs> you know, like them days was over. So it was like, man, I had to, you know, put that jersey, hang it up in the Raptors, no more relationship hoeing around campus. I got to be straight up. I got to be a one with her and let her know how I feel. So again, I don't care what y'all are doing on in life. Trust me, somebody is watching you. So you might as well do it really good and be upfront, be honest and transparent. All right, y'all. That's all I got for you. I appreciate you again for tuning in to another episode of Exposed and letting that light shine through me as it shines through you. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.